It's another it's, episode of Sibling Rivalry. It's another you know, episode of Sibba, 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 Cack. Right Bob, to the right, stop right, the right, 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 no right, 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 you are not ballroom. You will never be ballroom. Stop it. I'm not. Well, I, you know, I, 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 you, you could become ballroom, but I learned this from the, um, uh, well, me and you both were learning how the to. The House do... of Farina? No, no, that, from, um, House of, um, Gucci. I know, I'm just joking about Mitch. Mitch, oh, Gucci Mitch used to always be, Mitch used to always give us the. Well, I got okay. better. After, after, after working with, um, with, um, with them, I got better at it. I have too. I, I I was better on tour, and now I stopped practicing. It they always say Monet just follow, make them follow each other like that. And I was like, oh yes, there we yeah, go. D- She's following. DYU is so good. DYU in Brooklyn. DYU. They, they, that's their move. Like DYU in Brooklyn, they be doing it so slick. Uh-huh. It looks so good. And uh, and and Gravity, Gravity is insane. Like well, gravity, gravity is legs too. Gravity is made out of noodles. Gravity is made out of pasta. The things they make pasta with, that's what gravity's body is made out of. Yeah. And you know, I used to um get a lot of lessons from one of my drag kids, Princess Lockeroo. Princess Lockeroo, who is the whacking queen of New York City. Um, I she just tagged us in something recently. I love Princess Lockeroo. She's love a, her. She's a she's a she's a great queen. Now, as if you y'all don't know, know, Prince Lockeru is probably like the like when it comes to whacking, which is like this kind of like a uh, dance style that has connection Funk. through through disco and ballroom. Um, yeah, and she is she's like probably the number one whacker in the world. Like when it comes to whacking, she's like she's top three. She's amazing. Yeah, Princess Lockeru is everything. One of one of more of Bob's children that he's abandoned. That's not true. First of all, she she didn't do drag for long. She had a drag name, Vagina Vaginosaurus Flex. <laughs> Did you ever see her do Vaginosaurus Flex? <laughs> yes, yes. I and um, that. I think that she was more focused on her career as a dancer than as um as a drag superstar. But Vaginosaurus Flex lives in my heart. And if Vaginosaurus Flex and, and I are ever in the same town again. And she's vagina source flexing. I would love to have because she is in, she's insane. She used to come to the monster and do do shows at Look Queen. I remember, and she 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 did a few shows shows with you at Barracuda, or like yeah. she would come and do like a number together. What's that other that other um 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 Pangina. chubby Asian? Oh no, oh no, because Pangina used to work with Pangina used to work with um Lockeroo. That's how I met Pan, Pangina. Oh really? Out out of drag, yeah. And then then she moved then she moved back to Thailand, and I saw her. And next thing I knew, she was hosting Drag Race. I said, "Well, hello, somebody." Um, you know, the, the chubby, the, girl. the chubby woman. Name. Oh my god, Yeek. she was everything. Her, Mayu, Mayu, Mayu. me. No, it's close. We're in the we're in the vicinity. It was like Mayu or something or or Mio. Yeah, Mio, Mio. The me. Her name was like Mio the the star or something like that on on um on Instagram. But man, this girl, I I was blown away by this girl who's so Lockery used to bring a bunch of different um. Because like, a lot of people, just like kind of, just like voguing, whacking will bring a lot of like people from different countries and different. Would able to come to New York City for these like uh, whacking conventions, kind of. Yeah, and my Mayu, I don't remember. Anyway, she uh, was one of the kids. One of the not kids. They're, they're all adults. That that uh, that Lockeroo brought to. Uh, I hate that I do that. I really want to stop calling people kids because they're. Uh, and it, and it makes me sound 90,000 years old is what it makes me that, sound. That's like with me and girls. I I hate when I say girl. Women. But these are grown women or boys, men. Women. More so I do it with, with girls and women. I really want to stop doing that. Oh, my God. I just did you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you, you're hooked. But anyway, I think her name was Mayu. But anyway, Mayu came up on stage and did a single lays with me years ago at Barracuda. Um, and she was just an, an insane. And she, she actually hit the drag scene a little bit, too. Yeah. You know, drag is the art of drag is for everyone to partake in. We just ask that when you come into the house, you take your shoes off. Don't be stomping around, walking on the furniture with your, you know, don't be like leaving the fridge open. Just treat it with respect and you're welcome to the community. I don't even know that I ask all that because if you don't treat respect, I don't really. (laughs) Is that horrible? I'm like, I don't really care. Like if you if you're like if you're doing it, whatever, like. I don't know. It's not maybe maybe I'm. I mean, we're jumping into the topic a little too early, but like I'm. I'm just. I'm not really a gatekeeper. Not really. You know what I mean? Oh God. I mean, I. I, I well, we we, we kind of talked about this on sibling watchery when we talked about um when we talked. Oh my God. Let me. My notifications are going the hell off, and it is just really. It's so loud in my ear. 
do not disturb. Why am I heat um, right We kind of talked about this on something watchery though. with um with um, Malaysia and Mistress like baby being doll. so gagged that like the young b- baby doll being so gagged that these like girls have been doing drag for like a year. No, her, no, her name is months. her name is Malaysia baby doll. But I just I just love doing baby doll. Something about calling her baby doll is great to me. Baby doll. Um, but yeah, we kind of, t- and it's not gatekeeping, but it's just like, you know, I mean, I, I, I will say I had those feelings more so when I was a local girl, when I was a, when I was a local girl working my gigs, working my six gigs a week. And then this bitch who will come into the bar after do, I have never seen this bitch ever out in drag. She'd been doing drag for three months talking about, yeah, my booking fee is $125. I'm like, yo, booking fee, bitch, if you don't sit your booger bitch ass down, now, your, your that, booking fee is not. Is that gatekeeping or being like, you're just not being realistic? Like, is that gatekeeping to be like. Like, bitch, booking fee, are you joke? As Monet, I, I miss when you say that. Are you joke? <laughs> well, I think it's a little gatekeeper because I'm like, no, because because I'm like, no, you need to pay your dues. You kind of just pop up and tell me 125. I was like, you need to pay, you need to come to my show and you need, and you need to, I, I need to see you out at, at, at Queen, at the help. I need to see you doing Star Search. I need to see you like tr- putting your time in to become a New York City Queen. So that's it is kind of gatekeepy. Believe, I don't necessarily believe that because I think you can ask for it. And if you and if you can get it, you better work. I don't think it is realistic to pop up and ask for that and expect to get it. Part of me is like you're like I'm not gonna if you're a baby queen, I'm not gonna pay you $150 to come and perform my show because bitch, I've never even like I don't I don't know if you're even good. And also a big part of having people at your show in New York City is not just just it's not just like oh what can you add to my show it's also who can you bring to my show we are like like especially back then we were like local artists trying to like it took so Mm -hmm. much to build up a fall y'all don't understand how hard it is to build up a following in new york city when we're not you're not just competing with other drag queens you're competing with broadway you're like, yeah. like, bitch, my rival is fucking a Hamilton. Book of Mormon. Right. Book of Mormon. You know what I mean? <laughs> Phantom of the Opera. Like, I'm asking you to come to my show when you could go see world class singers. And I'm over here telling my little jokes. You know what I mean? You want to see my yeah. show? You can go to Caroline's Comedy Club and see, like, some of the top comedians in the world. And see, them, and see them tell, tell, tell them jokes that Bob been ripping from them. Yes. That is money. Do not spread it. Let's talk about the jokes you've been ripping from me. And also, everyone agree that you're a Nepo baby. Thank you and everyone in the comments everyone, for agreeing. And everyone, Thank I, you. I, I, I'm not your Nepo baby. Okay, just because they say it doesn't mean it's true. And number one, they pointed out all the ways that your bitch ass is a Nepo baby. So, so you're going to take that? No. You're going to take that medicine? No, no, no. Eat that medicine too. You're saying they were like, Bob is Bianca and, and uh, Peppermints and Sherry Vine Nepo baby. No, I got inspired by them, but I, I did not use their merits to make it big. And you, you literally, and you literally, you, you literally, my tra- you literally took, you literally took peppermint's merit on Monday nights to build your career. And How you about use, that? And you use my name. I got your you gigs. I, Peppermint never got me gigs. Peppermint gave me inspiration in life. I gave you gigs. <laughs> I handed inspired you. your career. I handed you gigs that you could have never gotten unless I gave you the gigs. <laughs> you are. I stepped down. You are so you drinking step again. Up. Honey, you are drinking I again. Step and, down so you can step up. <laughs> you are drinking again. You are ridiculous. So you're my uh, Nepo baby. My little. Mm, I, there's literally a picture of me holding you like a baby. Literally. <laughs> Put the picture my on will. the mother- Put the picture on the motherfucking screen. <laughs> against my will. I didn't want to do that, that photo shoot. I, you literally dragged me to, to Preston's house. That's like, well, not- they. Please, can we please? Monet, I was like, okay, you sure. You introduced me to Preston. I didn't even know Preston before the photo shoot. And then you went behind my back to do that photo shoot. And I was like, okay, I guess. Let me, let me find my Nepo baby fucking photo. Jacob, <laughs> we'll, we'll find it later. But that Nepo baby. Anyway, Monet, you're a Nepo baby. It's okay. Nothing wrong being a Nepo baby. <laughs> Not a fucking Nepo baby. And time out really quick. But your shirt say Tyrese, 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 like the singer Tyrese? No, the uh, Tyrese, the um, the performer. They're, they're, uh, they were on uh, Slag War season one. I was obsessed with them. Oh, so you bought their merch? Yeah, Jacob got it for me as a gift, and I love this sweatshirt, and I love Tyrese. Tyrese is hot. I love me some Tyrese. I have a question. I have an answer. Have you ever fucked a porn star? Uh, a porn star. I, I, I fucked a few people with OnlyFans, but I don't know that I would call them porn stars. Okay, but not like someone who is like at uh, Cocky Boys or no, Macho I Fuckers. I don't think so. Have you? No, I don't think I hook up with aren't usually like the porn star types. Like, you know, I feel like they're, they're a little more hippie looking usually than they have than, hippie porn stars. Yeah, I guess so. But I feel like they're all like like muscle twinks and like big strong daddies and like um, really muscly. And I don't really hook up with that many muscly guys. Nothing against muscly guys. It's just not really my my vibe. 
Well, I was recently at a party and like I knew that there was one porn star there. And then I bounced to this other guy at the party. I was like, and the whole I I I I saw his face on this person looks so familiar. And then I'm, you know, walking around the party and then, you know, and I didn't talk to him right away. Like maybe like a half an hour into the party, I ended up being in the same little like party circle with him, like a conversation. I was like, you know what? You look so familiar. I just I just cannot tell like did you porn. live in New York? He was like, he was like he was like, no. I was like, have you ever hung out with the ex? He's like, no, I don't even know those people. I was like, but I know you from somewhere. He was like, um, I know where you know me from. And I was like, where? And he's like, I'm a porn actor. I was like, I don't know you from porn. I was like, I don't remember. I was like, I would, I would know what your dick looks like, what your ass or your hole looks like. I don't, I don't think so. He's like, that's why you know me from porn. And he was like, I was like, oh, okay. Was this? What? Wait. What, uh, where was that? This was at the New Year's Eve party I went to. Was it Jesus really? On because there's a I don't even know if that's still his name on on Twitter, but there was a guy on Twitter named Jesus really, who you and I used to both talk about, and then I saw him. Um, I saw him at a uh, he was go going recently. I was like, man, you look so <laughs> familiar. I don't know. And I literally had the exact. Thing. I was like, I don't know what it is about you, but I swear I've met you somewhere before, <laughs> and right? He, and he was like, well, you know. And I was like, what? And he was like, mm. and I was like, what? He was like, mm. and I was like, oh. <laughs> Por- his name was like Jesus. He was like a, I, I cannot remember uh, his, his name was Jesus. All I remember that his name was Jesus. And, but he changed Jesus his name. really. His name mm. used to be Jesus really. Oh my Instagram. God. But I, think well, I didn't because, even say Siri. Why is Siri going off? Wait, I sorry. Think because he <laughs> is a, uh, a porn actor. He's, his account's probably been deactivated a few times. Twitter does that. I suppose every bitch, everybody have got everything no, out on Instagram. Twitter. What is Instagram. what a? Oh, what oh, is that, what's that one guy's name with the with the big fat booty? He's a black guy. He has a gorgeous butt, and he was at the. I know who's talking. No, Kevin. Hey. He was, he, was, he, was at, he was at the the night that you and I performed at at uh, Heart, or maybe it was the night that I performed my single. Oh, the white guy. No, he's a black guy. The white guy. No, he's a black guy. Um, uh, 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 um, um, Judas. um, Judas King. So this guy hangs Judas out with Judas King. a lot, or at least I saw him with Judas. Um. Anyway, and 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 he was like, "Girl, it's porn," and I was like, "Girl, you're right." Girl, <laughs> clock. <laughs> Judas King. Judas King has a great. Oh wonderful. yes, he's always he's always around in, in in WeHo. Yeah, he's hot. His body. Judas is hot. I agree. Very hot. Glad, <laughs> glad we're on the same page about this. <laughs> I'm glad me and Monet are brave enough to share these really unpopular opinions. Yeah, Judas is hot. But um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, I've never hooked up with anyone um, when I was a woman of the world. I've never, um, not that I wouldn't, I just, I, I, no one in porn uh, was looking to have sex with me, so it didn't happen. I can't find the other person who I who I thought was uh who I didn't know and whatever I'm like I hate when I I get in a thing and I'm like I have to find this and I end up spending my entire time with someone looking for a thing and I never find it. Oh, we know I've witnessed it many times. Um, but do but I want to since you're in the business of witnessing. Do any stuff. do any of our patrons or any of our listeners um if y'all are if y'all do OnlyFans or porn can y'all like uh put a thing in the comments I want to like see. Uh, we we might have been doing another sibling jerkery. You know, I, oh I, I actually wanted to do a thing where I review OnlyFans on my TikTok. But Me I don't, too. But the reason why well, I don't want to do it, YouTube back in the day. The reason why Go I ahead. don't want to do it is because I don't want to mess up anyone's bag. My idea would be like, is it like, is this OnlyFans worth it? In my mm-hmm. opinion. But if I click on your OnlyFans, then it's not worth it. Like. I don't, I'm not saying that you you don't have the right to put on your OnlyFans whatever you want to put on there, but I would just be like based on me and what I like to spend. So I, w- I wouldn't show their content. I would just like maybe give some yeah. vague descriptions of what I'm seeing. I'd be like, there is some oral sex. There is some fucking. There is some most. It's mostly solo stuff. And in my opinion, it's worth it. Or like it's just literally pictures from, that you could put on Instagram, but a little more risque. So to me, it's not worth it. But a lot of the um, OnlyFans uh, thing is like, what's behind the paywall? What's behind the paywall? Yeah. You know, some, some people get like that about our patron. Like I posted today that um, uh, part one of me and Bob reviewing the thing is, uh, bitch, the amount of comments I got were like, wow, really on Patreon behind a paywall? Yeah, bitch. You yeah, can. You can. It costs you us can money go- to make this. <laughs> and then we'll tell you more about how much money it costs when we get back from this break. <laughs> 
It should cost a billion to make this pod. Uh huh. Uh huh. But you make it look easy because we got it. Kitty it cat cut. It doesn't cost billions, but it does cost hundreds of thousands, uh, over a hundred thousand dollars a year to make this podcast. Exactly. So people, Probably no. I'm like, I would say it costs hundreds of thousands a year to make this podcast. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. For sure. So I'm like, ugh, I can't believe you and Bob will put it on on our Patreon behind a paywall. Really, girl? Well, someone got, girl, I got a message today that was like wild. I was kind of cackling and gag. I was like, oh my God. What? Whoa, this whoa, guy whoa, whoa. was like, Bob, um, it was a picture of me. They shared a picture of me and was like, I hate this dumb bitch who's always talking just to hear himself speak. I am Mexican and Mexicans are real. And I was like, what? What? Is that what you got out of what I said? I didn't say Mexicans aren't real. That's not what I said. Well, I think that we should do a... I That's another thought, too. So um, I was reading some of the comments, and I think we should do a whole podcast about that because I think we can we can talk ad nauseum about it. And also someone who is a social scientist comments on our Patreon. I think we should invite them, too. Their name was Adam or Abraham something. Yeah. I well, think it would be a very fun... The social scientists, all they, all they said was, like, Bob, I, I implore you to think of a different... They didn't say you're wrong, but I yeah, do agree I that, the, that. So, the, the... what. And I will give you all a, a brief view of what I said, and then I'll move on. I was talking about how race and nationality are not the same thing. So so you probably already heard it, but Jack said she's half black, half Puerto Rican. But Puerto Rican is not a race. But there is, there are there is a race of people who are indigenous to Puerto Rico, but there are people who are also all white and Puerto Rican. Our friend Alfredo is white, fully white, and also fully Puerto, Puerto Rican. And, and he's Puerto Rican. Um, but there's also people like Lupita Nyong'o, who is black, and she is Mexican. She's not half Mexican. Or she's fully black because that's her race, and she's fully Mexican because that her, nationality her nationality is Mexican. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think I could, it would be a very interesting pod, and I think we should we can do a whole a podcast about it. It'd be very cute. But the guy said, um, "I am Mexican and I'm real," and I was like, "What do you think I said? You think I said Mexicans are fake? There are no Mexicans." <laughs> She went. She was. She was Mexican. She went Puerto, <laughs> Puerto Rican. Puerto <laughs> Rican. She's Mexican. She went Puerto Rican. <laughs> uh, but, but not not, not Bob trying to uh, uh, gatekeep race. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. I not. I'm just saying <laughs> that that's like saying I'm half black, half American. I'm half black, half American. <laughs> what does that mean there are black there are lots of black people in puerto rico like a lot of black people in puerto rico well i will say people need to i mean again we, we, i feel like we're, we're getting to the top it's like americans need to be more confident about identifying as american like because there is an american culture and i feel like you know whiteness you know, this week we can't we're gonna we're gonna go into this whole uh, also loop. just to be clear puerto rico percentage wise is blacker than america is I just it? Googled it. Puerto Rico is 17.5% black. As a percentage, Puerto Rico is blacker than America is. <laughs> okay, we cannot we, we cannot go deeper. Into, we need to go to the topic we're talking about. She went Puerto wanna... Rican. <laughs> beedy, 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 bum, bum. Bo, I want to do a video about... where I have like a long blonde wig and go, ooh, ooh I feel European, honey. Pian. Pian. <laughs> she went European. <laughs> I thought she was European. <laughs> and then do some German song like Lysing, do sing, for sing, moosing. Oh my God, you're, well, you, you are, you are coming for, not coming for German, but your interpretation of what German sounds that like. That wasn't good German. So that, that, that was like Swedish. <laughs> I actually did Swedish. My, my German is like, Hicksplagen. Mixing Kleigen. Sieben fucking Sonnenkreis. Ein Vater. Well, no, you're speaking real German. That's not fair. You, you have to do fake German. Do, I, do, I, I can't do fake, honey. I don't even know the real thing. Uh, knows one opera. Now she's now she's fucking sp <laughs> sprechen the Deutsch. Now she's sprechen the Deutsch. Can we do fake French? Fake French. Uh, wait, Monet has to do fake German first. Do a little fake German. Um, uh, I don't even know how to do it fake. I need to really think about it because I don't even know fake stuff. Um, ja, ist ein Urkind. Um, um, sie bin Und my fake French would be um, uh, tendresse. <laughs> Kalesa, <laughs> wee wee, bitch, wee wee, <laughs> wee wee, bitch, <laughs> wee wee, fuck, skip, <laughs> wee wee, bitch, wee wee. Okay, fake Italian, fake Italian be um. But um, you know, uh, we went to go uh, to the store. Uh, no, that's Amer that's English, Monet. That's English. You're speaking English with an Italian accent. 
Italian accent. Okay, well, Jacob didn't specify Italian accent or Italian language. No, fake Italian for me would be um um racapustusi, vica patai, si o no mocamusi o no, vica patai no musifini. Mussolini, Mussolini antipasti burata. <laughs> He's just saying food and people. <laughs> and people. <laughs> okay. say, why did I go to Mussolini? Oh, God. Not evoking Mussolini's name. Jesus Christ. <laughs> the last one was you is Russian. Oh. What do Russians sound like? Dobro jutro. Oh, yeah. Kusa bisporsin musin musborsin fisin hur. Borsh. Borsh mush norsfin. Um, Monet, how do you feel about okay, do you gatekeep? You, you mentioned earlier you gatekeep drag a little bit. Do you gatekeep do you gatekeep uh with, with your uh West Indian culture? Do you gatekeep can I make can I make um curry goat? <laughs> yeah, you can I do not gatekeep West Indian culture. I do not gate I think drag is the only thing I gatekeep just a little bit and on and 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 I wouldn't even call that gatekeeping. I would just because I think it directly like affected me. Like someone, try, I, I I really got that is a what I told was a true anecdote. Some a younger queen really came. Like I saw her. She she came to my gig one time and asked and told me her booking fee was one hundred and twenty five dollars um, for because uh, I was inviting her to come and do a number and I was so gag. I was like, no, this raggedy bitch didn't just tell me her fee is one twenty five one hundred twenty five dollars when I never even met her before. But so there's no other the, aspect where I feel like I according to it. Urban Dictionary. Com, this is what gatekeeping is. When someone, uh, urban di- according to UrbanDictionary.com, gatekeeping uh, is making your interests exclusive in order to protect them from becoming mainstream. And according to Wikipedia, mm. a gatekeeper is a person who controls access to something, for example, via a city gate or a bouncer. Oh, that's the actual gatekeeping. No. So, yeah. Yeah, like in a literal, yeah. So you're trying to but see. So, I, I don't so think so what you're doing that again? queen was gatekeeping. I don't think what you do that queen was gatekeeping. I think what you're doing that queen was like was a reality check because you, you weren't trying to stop her from doing drag. You just said, "A bitch, I'm not paying you 125." According to Urban Dictionary, gatekeeping is yeah. when someone uses a hobby or an interest as a means of elevating. Wait, I keep reading it wrong. There's oh, there's there's multiple. There's multiple. There's two. The first one says gatekeeping is is to make your interest exclusive in order to protect them from becoming mainstream that one has 258 likes meaning that's a very popular one and then this one has 2877 likes this one is when someone takes it upon themselves to decide who does or does not have access to rights to a community or identity that's the one i feel like most people know that's that one that, that is one more has familiar the most, definition it has the most likes honestly urban dictionary is yeah. like it used to kind of be like a joke but it's like really fierce and like it actually has I, it actually is the, like kind of really great with being an arbiter of what language is and how it changes and evolves do you want to look up something else in urban dictionary what? a spot because it's in there did you add it I did not add it. Can I, you, can I just add stuff? It's not. Or, yeah, and, Urban Dictionary yeah, is and, not Wikipedia. Yeah, and, and it and it will t- and it will tell us who added it to. So if you if you if you did it, we'll know. So I, I'm ready to expose you, honey. The A spot <laughs> has practically no upvotes, and it says. It doesn't, so just stop. Stop giving us just read I'm the not, definition. I'm not, I'm not kidding. The A spot, the number one, <laughs> the number one definition. Money. I'm not making this up. The number one, the first definition, it's not the, the first one that says, I don't know, is something Monet made up. It has 100, <laughs> I am not <laughs> lying. It has 141 <laughs> up, 142, I just clicked it. It says, I don't know, is something Monet <laughs> made up. <laughs> and then the next most popular one, it says, British slang for well done. No, it's spot on. Actually, the only thing on the A spot is just oh, and then there's the one that there's one that has less likes. Oh my god, this is crazy. The two ver- versions are one that says a male version of a G spot that has that has eighty six likes, and the one that says something Monet made up has one hundred and forty two likes. And now you will you you have to fucking convince me that you or your sneaky little boyfriend didn't do that. I know it's one of the two of y'all. Monet. Mm-hmm. It says it says right here was added by Sarah's cool thirty three. That's Jacob's pseudonym. Go ahead. Honestly, I'm gagged. And it has 100. And after this, it's going to get a lot more likes. Run over to UrbanDictionary.com <laughs> and upvote <laughs> something Monet made up. Anyway, so, um, yes, I th- the, the, that second one you read earlier, I think that's the more, uh, that is the more common definition of, of, of gatekeeping that a lot of people do. Do you think, is there anything that you gatekeep? Not a drag, anything. 
Um, I'm trying to think to myself, not really, because, okay, so here's the thing, you know, I don't, I, maybe there was a point where I, where, because I, I, okay, I'm part of the mainstreaming of drag. I started mm-hmm. drag because of RuPaul's Drag Race. I saw, a, I was mm-hmm. very early on this. I saw season one and I jumped on this. Was, it was so much fun. So I will say when I started drag, it was still, uh, it was a lot more underground than it is now. Like there was like, you didn't have an agent unless you were RuPaul or you were on drag race. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like now yeah. I know local girls with, with managers. I'm like, what, how are you a local girl with a manager? This is crazy to me. Yeah. This is cr- like, who are you giving 10% of your money and you're making like $60,000 a year? How are you doing this? How are you giving? <laughs> how are you making one twenty five and you're giving someone twelve dollars per gig? What is popping? You know what I mean? I mean, but I mean, if it works for them, I mean, and I, I know that I, I think we're talking about the same girls and back, and I think some of them have gone on Drag Race since then. But yeah, I mean, it worked for them though. They were doing like little yeah. little commercial and TV things here and there, so I guess it worked. No, it was it was really fierce, and that was the I think that was the mainstreaming of drag. Drag has definitely gone a lot more mainstream now than it was back in my day. Mm-hmm. And we were just you know at the bars hosting karaoke in New York City. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. I wasn't gatekeeping it, and, and 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 I think that the lack of gatekeeping in the drag community has allowed a lot of us to have a lot of success. Because it's not being gatekept. Yeah. Jacob, what's your question? Sorry. You're mute. During quarantine, there was that conversation um, about how certain queens in control of, like, bookings and gigs were gatekeeping, um, like, bookings from certain queens and holding them Oh. Around. Um, and well, that was a legitimate that. thing. It was, are you talking about the Chicago situation? I'm talking about the Chicago situation. Can you talk yeah. about it? I don't remember. Can you talk about it again? Oh, you mean well, the, the, yeah. the town hall? Yeah, the town hall. Yes, yeah. correct. Yeah, but well, is, I think because gate, I think is, is that, based off that definition, is that gatekeeping or is that just like, you mean, you mean when the white queen was stopping girls from doing it? That's not gatekeeping as much as that is oppressing. It's not yeah, about to say. Gatekeeping. I was like the. I was like the difference in that is that there is like a there is a power dynamic. So someone has the power and they're not willing to share it. Not to not to stop it from being mainstream. They're just being oppressive. Do you believe in gatekeeping like black hair and and uh, clothing and stuff and like black music? Well, you know, I like, think like what's that up with like Iggy, Iggy Azalea being in rap? Should we have gate kept rap more so Iggy Azalea couldn't be a rapper? Well, I think that that breaks into another conversation because you know. Um, when you think about rap, like rap was obviously started by by black and brown people in in uh, from urban areas, whatever, and and that's that, that's who popularized and, and made rap. But rap has spread, right? We have we have so many different types of rap now, and and every, it is not, it is socially acceptable for everyone to participate in the art form that is rap. Whether it's, whether it's Iggy Azalea, whether it's Megan Trainer, whether it's Snoop Dogg, Dr. Dre, whoever it is, and I think that Becky that's Trainor's what a art rapper? is, right? Art. I mean, I I wouldn't. I'm 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 being she a little said, hyperbolic. I don't think Megan Trainor you, identifies. I wanna be me too. I wanna be me too. Nigga. I wanna be me. Nigga. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I think that's what art does. Art spread, and and and. But then you start going into appreciate um appropriation, where like if 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 Iggy Azalea is now doing her rap and cornering her hair and wearing bamboo earrings and saying the end like that, then you are crossing over into something that is problematic. So do you believe in gatekeeping, like hairstyles and stuff? Do you believe in being like, you guys can't braid your hair. You guys can't wear cornrows. You guys can't do this, that, and the other. Well, this is, this, I'm so happy to you bring that up because a, appropriation is such an American thing. And I was watching. I was so, Kimchi and I was having this conversation because you know Kimchi is South is, is South Korean. I'm from I'm from the West Indies. And when and like for example in St. Lucia, in a lot of the West Indian islands, um, Dominica, Trinidad, Barbados, whatever, every year they have carnival, right? And you see people from all over the world: Asian people, white people, Latin people, whoever it is. They're all coming to the islands and they are participating in carnival where they're. So a lot of them are braiding their hair up because white people, whoever it is, braiding their hair up because it's a protective hairstyle and they putting on um, the flag colors and they're wearing I'm the costumes and stuff like that. I've never even been to Jamaica before, but I I know for a fact from people who have visited Jamaica, like, if you walk through the streets of Jamaica on certain streets, th- people will be like, let me braid your hair. Let me braid your hair. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like a thing that they're like, the, like, they're, like, they're, the, 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 the black Jamaicans there are like, we're going to braid your hair. We're going to put bees in your hair. 
That's everywhere. That's a lot of, so 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 it's like it's not a thing. It's it's a very Americanized thing. And I think America has this weird thing with culture. Where and again, because we're such a young nation, we're still trying to figure it out. But a lot of St. Lucia is too. St. Lucia has only had their independence for mm, twenty something. Uh, not sorry, like forty something years. So yeah, I don't know. It's it, it's a very American thing. It's not a problem anywhere else. Kim Chi was saying this too because when we went to South Korea, we were watching the drag show. And this woman had this beautiful hanbo on. She was doing this number. I was like, bitch, this number is dope. I was like, I wish I could get a kimono and do and and. and do a number like that. And Kim was like, well, why can't you? I was like, girl, people in America would eat me up. She was like, so who cares? She's like, come and do it. She's like, she's like, she's like no Korean person would have a problem with it. And again, that's just that's, Kim Chi's perspective, right? She doesn't speak for her whole... That. I love that you said that too because uh, someone pointed out that when Adele went to Jamaica for, for uh, whatever she was there for and she had yeah. her hair up in the bed two knots and she's wearing the Jamaican flag and had the thing on. Uh, yeah. par- someone was saying like, Jamaicans were lit. I don't, I'm not Jamaican. I am not Jamaican. <laughs> But apparently Jamaicans were like living. But everyone else was like, look at this fucking white bitch. Americans. But also, I don't think I don't think Adele is very influential. I don't think Adele has the power to appropriate uh, the Jamaican flag and whether anyone would think it came from Adele. Like I don't think anyone would be like Adele's Jamaica. Adele made Jamaicans. Jamaica, yeah. Adele made Bantu. I mean, but you look at the Kardashians, right? Because the Kardashians who are you know, a big part of their brand and the culture is taking on black culture and taking it on as their own. Kylie, um, Chloe. I remember when Chloe was wearing um, Bantu knots and a lot of the kids, and there was this big story about a lot Mark of the kids. wearing Bantu knots? Yeah, she had, she had to, it was a band to some type of black hairstyle. And then, um, and she said something, somebody listening to this knows exactly what it, what it is. And she said something like, she did not, like, she alluded that um, her and her hairstylist came up with this together. Work. And, she better and work. I, and I, I'm like fucking it up a little bit. There's a little nuance, a little more nuance in it, but that was like the gist of the story. And like all like the little fans, like, oh my God, I love this new hairstyle Chloe came up with. And then people in the comments are like, bitch, no. Black people, what are you talking about? You did not come up with your hairstylist. This is a black hairstyle. What the fuck are you talking about? What's the first thing you do when you wake up? Is it checking your phone? Is it checking your beeper? Is it checking your fax machine? Is it checking up on your credit score? I think so. At Chime, that's what they do, girl. With the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card, you can start to build credit with your own money. Chime reports your payments to credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. The members see an increase of up to 30 points on average. All this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start your credit journey with Chime. Sign up takes only two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash rivalry. That's Chime.com slash rivalry. The Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card is issued by Stride Bank NA pursuant to a license from Visa USA Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa credit card. Regular on-time payment history can have a positive impact on your credit score. Impact to score may vary and some user scores may not improve. Out-of-network ATM withdrawal fees may apply except at MoneyPass ATMs in a 7-Eleven or any AllPoint or Visa Plus Alliance ATMs. Are you ready to be the most prepared couch critic you've ever been? Of course you are, Miss Thing. Your new favorite fashion podcast has entered the chat. It's Giving Fashion is here to serve you up iconic red carpet moments, social media styles, and of course, classic TV and movie looks. Hosted by internationally renowned drag superstar, my homie, Shea Coule, they'll discuss everything trendy, outrageous, and more. It's Giving a must listen. So join them every week from Sony Music Entertainment and something else. Listen and follow It's Giving Fashion wherever you get your podcast. You know what they say. History repeats itself. And you know what? So does fashion. But So do you believe in gatekeeping things like Bantu knots or, or hairstyles? Like, or do you believe in being like, like if a, if a white person wants to wear cornrows, where do you stand on a white people wearing cornrows? I say that if you are if they're doing it in and if in an appreci- in an appreciative way, then yes. If you're appropriating it to take it on as your own, no. Like if you're going, if you are going to Miami Carnival and you want to put your hair up in, in cornrows and jump and, and jump in a fet, sure, go ahead, by all means. But don't be like rocking it. But then it gets a little tricky because then you see the motherfuckers at work in cornrows and bit, well, a, a lot of hair a lot of policies have changed with hairstyles at work. But if it's appreciative, yes. Appropriative, no. I think my my views on it have changed a lot, and I think society's had a lot to do with that. Because when I was younger, 
if a if a white person had cornrows, to be honest, folks were like work. Like, especially where I'm from, mm-hmm. I, I grew up in a black community. So if one of the white folks had cornrows, everyone would be like, oh, work, you got cornrows. You better work, girl. But mm-hmm. but it never really was much beyond that. Especially if you grew up in if you if you grew up in a black community and there were like one or two white people there, those people kind of especially if they especially if they grew up around all the white people, they kind of act black. Because they're surrounded mm-hmm. by black people, even if their parents yeah. aren't from there, if even if they move there and then they're the first generation to live amongst black people, they kind yeah. of just they kind of just act like black people, and you kind of would get used to it. And there are, I, mean, I guess, in my mind, my thoughts on it have I get uneasy sometimes with it. Like whenever I first met Thorgy and Thorgy had locks, I I really didn't think much of it. I still don't think much of it. And I had lock, I had locks when I was younger, but my father has locks or had locks. My well, we're we're all bald now. But my my father my, my father had locks. My uncle had locks. Um, my nephew, a lot of people in my family. Jacob saw a lot of people in my family have locks. Locks are like a big hairstyle in my family. My aunt Lisa has locks. My aunt, her daughter, that like a lot of people in my family have locks. Mm-hmm. Um, and whenever I saw see a white person with locks, I guess for some reason I just I just never gave it much thought to be. If I'm being fully honest, it never. And I actually am from a time where having locks was literally considered unprofessional at work. I am from right. a time. I I I I I was. It was late '90s. No, I had locks in the early 2000s. Maybe at the turn. Maybe at the turn of the century. Maybe I can't remember. I I, I had locks up until oh my I was god, 21 years old. We lived through a turn of the century. Oh my god, we lived yeah, through a turn 20, of the century. Yeah, 24 years ago. Monet, the century turned 24 years ago. God, continue. You, sorry. What, what do you mean we? This, where you been? It's just so crazy to say. It's just so crazy to say. Um, at the turn of the century, when I, like, gag. Anyway, <laughs> it's so funny. But um, <laughs> but but I think that um, I don't know. I'm, and and I get I get the concept behind it because like these like white people. Okay, let me think. Like white people, they're like you get to wear locks, then you get to cut your. You are wearing a hairstyle that black people get like oppressed for having. Hmm. I that makes sense to me, but I, I guess I don't know what they're getting away with by having the hair because they because some black people have to do these hairstyles. When this white person, they can no one they has to do and, locks. No one has to do locks. I had locks. No one has to do locks. Oh, I, I'm I, I, I'm taking a conversation like and outside of locks, but just like black hairstyles. Like they can they can pick and choose which ones they want to do and look cool and be praised for it. But the same black but black people black people don't have the, like you kind of well, have question, to. You know what I mean? Prob- I'm probably gonna get roasted for this. Like outside of like having an afro, what hairstyle do black people have to have? Like who has to have braids? Who has to have cornrows? Who has to have? I mean, and this is for someone who had locks for like I had long locks. I never had to have. I just wanted them because I liked them. I mean, I've never, I've never been a cornrow girl, but I correct me if I'm wrong. I thought that certain types of cornrows are protective hairstyles to help your hair grow. Because if you're here, because some people their hair just does not grow successfully, they cannot cornrow their hair down. I agree. It, it is, it is protective, but but who has to have? Who has? It's because you have want your one. hair to grow. You want, you want the luxury of your hair growing, just like Susie and Rebecca. But I don't get why you have to have the lock. Like if you, if you want this, then you have to do this. That makes sense. But outside of that, no one has to have cornrows. No one has to have locks, except for like Afro. Like, yeah, that's the way my that's the way my hair grows. My hair, if I were to grow hair, I have very, very, very kinky hair. Like I have like Brillo pad hair. My hair is very kinky, very what people call nappy hair. Mm-hmm. It is black, black, black hair. There's nothing soft or anything about my hair. Um, so I do have to have that hairstyle unless I want to treat it or something. But I never had to have but I know some people are very, very passionate about this. They're like they're like white people cannot have his hairstyle, and I guess I just never felt like it took anything from me. I do think some people look a little silly. Like if you're white with like box braids, you you look a little silly. I I do think you look a little bitch. silly sometimes. You know what I mean? Bitch, going through Amsterdam, I I, I, I I the culture shock I felt when I went to Amsterdam for the first time back in 2018, whatever it was, I was just, it was literally just a bunch of white people with dreadlocks and box braids on bicycles. It was such a, it was like this, it's like, they someone took all the black people and just like erased them a lot and make them really light and it's just a bunch of white people with also, dreadlocks and box braids. It was question, so strange. Is, is it is it strange that there's like this like competition between like Scandinavian people and black people to try to find out who did locks thing. first? Like, no, we did 
did it first, but first. He, but, but there's a picture <laughs> there's a picture of a Scandinavian on a cave drawing that they yeah. Like, yeah, but there's a black person on another drawing from this and I'm like, what are, yeah. we, what are we doing? We found a skeleton of a Viking with locks for, I'm like, what y'all <laughs> trying to find at, out who can do it. At yeah. what point is it like at what point is it like, what does it matter? But also, am I being ignorant of being like, why are we racing to find out who did locks first? I guess it, I guess it just feels, you know, I, what I think, I think it just feels like to be a black person or a person of color, to feel like you have so much taken from you and so much ripped away from you. Like, I want to say that this is my thing. This is our thing. I want to hold on to this thing. And when someone comes at you, well, actually, no, you didn't do it first because in 2 BC, um, um, he had dreadlocks. And you're like, no. But in 1 BC, bitch, this is ours. Please. Like, you cannot take this cultural thing from me. But does it, but do you, does it diminish what you have if so, if, if a white person has it? I don't think it diminishes. I think it's just wanting to hold on to like, this is ours. We started this. Like we, like this is something we want. I don't think it takes away from anyone. I, I, I think it does take away in terms of in, like, when you're like, now I don't even have that anymore. You know what I mean? I think when, when it, when it appears that white people have an abundance of things, like they, they have all this stuff, all these things at their fingertips. So it's like, and again, it's not just the one hairstyle thing that black people have or people of color can hold on to, but it does feel like this, like, ancient thing that we can say that we that ours and we started it and i think that's what the conversation starts to divulge into and and i and i can see that i can see that being a, a valid thing but then i guess a, uh, another part of me is like because like black culture is really not easy to pin down like for example i'm black monet's black lupita and yango is black and because i'm American, Monet's Caribbean, and she's Mexican, and then you have someone else who's like, who's you know from like Nigeria. We are all Bibi we all, yeah Bibi from Cameroon. We all have black culture, but me and Bibi's uh, childhoods and our culture is there's probably very little overlap because of how different. Yeah. But it is still black culture. They're com- they're just they're mm-hmm. just really culturally speaking. Me and BB Zahar, but they are very, very in any like and black folks will tell you, like black Americans will tell you the difference between like black like Nigerians and like black Americans, it is, it is, it is night and day. If you were like black growing up and you had Nigerian friends and you went to their house, they did not live like you. They didn't talk like you. It is so it's so different. Even mm-hmm. though you were both black, you're 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 th- there's different versions of black culture so then the question yeah. is is that also our culture like because i don't know where i'm from in africa is that culture still my culture even though i've not participated in it and it's not because i chose not to but it was like ripped from me and i don't even know where i'm from yeah you know i, I since this, this kind of goes back to what i was saying earlier i, I think that black americans need to like embrace and I, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you completely give up on your ancient ancestral cultures in Africa. But I feel like there, there needs to be, like, we need to hold on and embrace what Black American culture is because it is something that is so rich and it means a lot to so many people. And I think there is so much there. And I think there is a way of making, and, and not making, it, it already is a rich thing, but but being, but trying to ex- expand on that and make that be fierce. And not, again, I don't want people to give up trying to find their African, like continental African uh, uh, culture. I'm not saying that. I'm like build upon and really embrace what what black African-American culture is. Black American culture is obviously, it's one of the most impactful cultures in the world. But also what's interesting is like a big part part of black American culture up until recently has been kind of like carving out a space for yourself where, where you were prohibited from doing something before. So black people can't, um, black people aren't allowed to, you know, pr- participate in this. So then we made our own. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then this, yeah. one, then this one, the other one, the one that we made ended up being so good, so amazing, so remarkable that that white folks were like, "That is actually very interesting. We would like some of that." So take take rock and roll for example. Like rock and roll really started with people like Little Richard, who's like the the who's like the godfather of of, of rock. Or I believe yeah. that's I believe that's his term the 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 Godfather of Rock or the or he he often he often calls himself the Blueprint. Yeah, which I saw an interview. Did you know that he had get he got saved and he wasn't gay? I did not know Little Richard was 
had become straight. Did you know oh, that? Okay, so so he was the founding father of rock and roll. So okay, founding Little father. Richard had a very interesting relationship with queerness. I did not know this. There were times where he wrote songs that he was like obviously like out gay, and then he was like not gay, and then he was like I feel like Little Richard came from a time where it was like gay. It wasn't really a. It was like you're gay, but you're also you're not, but you're kind of not being it, but you are it. Like a lot of people don't know that uh, Tutti Frutti, um, uh, Tutti Frutti, oh, oh, Judy, or oh, it used to be Tutti Frutti in the booty. Mm-hmm. He oh, publicly, what's the name of the person? It was, no, the song was, it was like Tutti Fruity. Oh, Rudy. It was originally Tutti Fruity in the booty. It was literally about butt sex. But then he made it big and he was like, oh, I got to kind of change. I got to kind of change my um my wording because all oh, this song about butt sex won't make it big. So he made it Tutti Fruity. Oh, Rudy. And then, of course, you have um Rosetta Tharp. Uh, who who sang uh, you ain't nothing body. but a hound dog. Not a hound dog. As as as, as uh, the the godmother of rock and roll. So rock and roll started as this black thing. Now hear me out. Let's imagine we gate kept rock and roll and never let the white people find out about it. Then it wouldn't be as big as it is today. So that people like, um, you know, Lenny Kravitz can have these massive, massive moments, or or even people back then like Little Richard. Elvis. Who ended up, people who back black people back then who got really big because of the popularity of rock and roll growing but then again i will say white people like took rock and roll they just took it and ran with it it is now they did white. but to the point here's where black the thing people tease other black people if they like rock and roll but here's the thing because again so now we're talking about this is the, rock and roll is african-american culture african but is but african-american culture so at what point does it not like Stuff in Africa, I, the white people that live in Africa, they don't say, oh, it is, we have white African culture. I mean, maybe they do. Like, there's a difference between white African culture and black African culture. It's just African culture. So, yes, rock and roll started out, black people did it in America, but at what point does it become? Now, again, there is, with music and stuff, that's a different story. Like, white people just take black songs, redo them, and make them big or whatever. That's a different story. But I'm saying, at what point do things in American culture stay as black? Stay as white. Like what? At what point does it all become one together? I don't know that I. I don't know that I believe in like stay away from our thing. Like I. That sounds weird to me. The idea of being like the like keep to your ownism to me feels weird, mm-hmm. and it feels like counterproductive. Like, but then again, if I saw like a like a okay, if I see like a white person rapping, that's not weird to me. But if I see a white person like doing like traditional African dancing, maybe because I'm not African, I'm like, that is kind of weird looking. Yeah. And, and, and it's black culture, but it's not my culture because I'm not, I, because I was raised in America, I wasn't raised in Africa. Although I do identify as African because, because of my heritage is obviously in Africa, but but I'm not African, but I am African. It's so it's so weird. Yeah, it is really weird, and, it's, and so 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 that's why I'm like like when do we all melt and just become American culture? Like what? But again, it's because America has such a. I mean, and not just America, the world does. Uh, slavery, hello, was a was a global thing. But in America, we have uh, we stop we, trying to our, make slavery a thing. I'm just <laughs> we have a lot of issues, and I think that is the crux of why there is why it's such a conundrum in America because. There's just like we just have our shit. We we have not really settled and deal with what slavery really was in this country. And we even today we have people that are like slavery isn't real. It didn't happen. Why can't black people get over it? So I think that's why there's this big people want to hold on to. Well, this is ours. You know, since you don't think slavery happened, then this is ours. You cannot participate in this because since you cannot reconcile with what your ancestors did in this fucking country. Are there other countries that have so recently? had to deal with large migrations, forcible migrations of people from other countries to that country. Like, for example, is there like a big, like the fact that America is about 12% black is wild because most of us were just brought here against our will. Most of us here are because our ancestors were brought, I mean, obviously you're not, that's not why you're here, but most Mm. black Americans like myself are here because a lot of our ancestors were brought here against their will. You know what I mean? Is there and and that was only like 160 years ago, Mm -hmm. maybe less. So, is there any other country in the world that's so recently dealing with that? Maybe that's why America is is in the situation that we're in, and why why a lot of black people feel they need to gatekeep the culture so so strong. Like I'm obviously not going to try to gatekeep uh, 
in, in, in like indigenous American culture. But when I if I when I see white people or black people or anyone dressing up like Native Americans, I'm like, ugh, that is it's, yeah. it's I feel un, I feel uncomfortable. I feel weird and I feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I think yeah, the the history of what that means, even in Can even in BC, but America doesn't even do like you you go to Canada, anytime you do something um on an indigenous like ground or somewhere that is that, that is recognized as an indigenous space, like they have protocols to like there's like a moment of silence. You recognize that while you're there, you recognize that you're in this space, like you pay respect. Whereas in America, I have never ever and I know for a fact I have done things in on indigenous soil and and, and Everywhere indigenous places. Everywhere in America and, is indigenous soil. All of Manhattan is and, indigenous soil. And so I and I have have you ever done that in America where you the way oh, there's a moment of silence, land acknowledgement. Have you ever done that before? I yeah, I mean I, I but I also lived in San Francisco for a short while, and San Francisco is very mm. much like about that land land acknowledgement lifestyle, um, but not but not as much as they do in, in Canada. Yeah, you know, yeah, Canada is really so, pissed about it. So Monet and I are talking about um, gatekeeping because there's a big discourse right now. Because first of all, I don't know if if Anitra is from ballroom or not. Is she? I don't know. She hasn't said anything, and I feel like at this point, she although she, she seems like one of those girls who doesn't want to like get she like she doesn't want to get into fights online. So maybe she just yeah. hasn't said it. I haven't seen it though. But so, but, but Anitra was uh you know uh voguing or as uh. Laomi has uh, coined the term noging on, which is when you're like fake voguing or like pretending to vogue or voguing based on what you've seen on TV and film, but not actually learning from ballroom people. Noging online, which is interesting to me too, because there is like, you know, uh, even though RuPaul is not from ballroom, but you know, Michelle Visage is from ballroom and is quite respect. What? Well, well she is. I don't know. I don't know if she is still quite respected in ballroom or not because of her association with RuPaul's Drag Race. But I also don't find that there is really this big divide between ballroom and RuPaul's Drag Race like the world's trying to make it seem like there is. Like, I went on Legendary, and I don't remember people being like... It, it felt like... It, it didn't feel like this big line in the sand that I feel like people are making it seem like it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I... I... <laughs> Again, because drag and ballroom, they're not the same thing, but there is a lot of drag in ballroom. And I think a lot of queens, you know, I, I see I see a lot of drag queens perform throughout my years. And like there there are aspects of voguing that queens throw into their their numbers that they're doing. Now, again, even my, I, I have myself. And I, I mean, I know that Naomi is very passionate about noging and people. And I'm trying to figure out exactly like what her gripe is. I was on her. Twitter today and looking at some of the dialogue and the discourse that she was having with some people in the comments. And I think that what she's saying, maybe we should, we're both friends with Naomi, Laomi. We should, yeah, yeah, we, we should we have on the podcast, podcast and talk about it. Yeah. yeah. I think, I think she's saying like when you are voguing and it's not looking good, be like, cause you didn't take the time to properly learn how to do it or learn from people from ballroom. I think that might be her qualm, but at the same time, I'm like, they have people who do interpretive dance, people who do different type of dance. And they, I don't, I don't think all these people go to the source to learn how to do it. I think that people are just dancing. And, and again, I, but I do get that she ballroom is, has only been rec in the past, like five, six years. Ballroom has become really mainstream. Whereas Laomi, this was a, a, a this was a means of survival for her. Laomi has been voguing in in the New York City since I used to see her when I was fourteen years old at Escuela sneaking in. So Laomi has been at this for years. So so I guess to her to see this art form that is her fucking baby, something that she has been instrumental in making it mainstream. To see people doing it, not doing it, great. It really pisses her off. Yeah, I, I guess so. But I'm, I'm intrigued too. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, yeah. I guess that that uh, that that does seem like what it is. And whenever I see people doing what I do, but not well, it doesn't bother me as much. Same. You know what I mean? But then I think about people like like it seems like somehow Michelle Visage has fallen out of favor in ballroom, which is interesting to me because she did not falling out of favor, but like she doesn't seem to get the res she doesn't seem to get like the respect that someone who did ballroom and like was like vogue they're like old ass videos of like like Michelle Visage like voguing like on old, the floor like old way like old old videos like before people were like before most drag race contestants were even alive Michelle Visage yeah. out there fucking like you know voguing 
You know what I yeah. mean? And walking face and 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 doing all these you know big moments. And but it's interesting to me too because a part of the lack of gatekeeping for ballroom, like you know, docu- like allowing people to document it in places like um, uh, the show Pose and uh, the documentary Paris is Burning, has allowed for these big moments like Pose. For these big mm-hmm. moments like legendary, so this, so that there's interesting. There's the lack of gatekeeping has allowed these massive moments and huge opportunities for people like, um, you know, the House of Juice Couture and and like in the, these like these commercials. What, what was that commercial? Was it the House of? Was it was it was it Balenci? No, was it, it was uh, uh, Mugler with Mugler. all the with all the um the ballroom juices. Yeah, and was it just juices? I can't remember. I don't know. I, I, I did, because we're friends with Juicy. I saw them post about it a lot. Like I saw them yeah. all like these like fierce Mugler fucking outfits and at the and at, it was at his uh, thing in Brooklyn. The 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 Mugler exhibit in Brooklyn. So maybe there is a a an area where the gatekeeping becomes like a, a right amount for people. It's, it's obviously it's, it's a personal taste because I'm sure there's a lot of people in ballroom who don't care, and, and there's probably people in ballroom who care a lot. I don't think that ballroom, yeah. I'm not from the ballroom scene, but I'm sure that ballroom is not homogenous in its thinking, just like um, other scenes are not homogenous in their thinking. You know what I mean? Yeah, I just, I mean, anytime, I, and again, I, Anitra did not mean any harm. Anitra did not go on, on TV or in her or in her social media and be like, I am ballroom. I'm coming to RuPaul's Drag to show people how to really vogue and how to really do a duck walk and how to and how to do a dip. You know what I mean? I, Anitra did not say that. Anitra went, she was like, I'm doing this number and I did, and I, and, and I duck walked in it and I duck walked in it and I did some voguing. She's not claiming ballroom and she's not saying that this is her thing that she started as she's bringing to Drag Race. So that's why I'm like, give this girl a break. Like she is not. Well, there's you know. also there's also lot there. There are, I want to say there are people. There's this insinuation that like drag and ballroom have no overlap, which is not. There is a lot of drag in ballroom and a lot in of ballroom, ballroom in in the in drag. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so and it's yeah. as, as if there have not been uh, ballroom girlies on Drag Race already. There are like legendary ballroom girls like Mar- like Mariah Paris Balenciaga who is like mm-hmm. legendary in the face category um on ballroom and and so it, it's it's not as if there is there is no crossover between ballroom and drag because the I don't yeah. think that and also ballroom in and of itself is like multiple art forms like ball, it's, ballroom is like the overall encompassing thing that involves things like runway catwalk and then, and then voguing and then also like style like full-on fashion um you know yeah. all, all these categories that that fall into the category of ballroom yeah yeah for sure so i just want to like <laughs> but i will say i think a big point of but contention do you, think you care less about anitra voguing because you're not from ballroom Maybe, but they have bitches walking in drag all the time at balls, and I'm the, you don't you don't see me like, do you, you, she not really in drag. How dare she call that drag? I'm like, bitch, work, okay. Well, there, I mean, I, I remember like there there was and there have been there have been like a couple of performances on actually I don't know much about it, but there were a couple of performances on Legendary where they were like doing other other forms of dancing as well mm-hmm. within within. I was like, you have to incorporate like a little bit of crumping or a little bit of this and that in the middle of that. Yeah. But then I I don't know I I don't have a lot of friends from the crumping community, <laughs> but I know that there's a whole culture around crumping. I know there's a whole thing. I know yeah. there's a whole like the, there's the clown makeup and there's the and I, if you're from the crump community, I don't know. But there's like the clowning part of it. Have you seen this? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it, it was it, it 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 got it was really big like early two thousands. Tyra Banks even had a photo shoot where the girls were crumping in it on Top Model. And were they in, were they like clowns? They had like a clown one. They had like a with a yeah. There's a clown person, not the girls necessarily. I love the I love that clowns are somehow associated with crumping. That is so sickening to me. That is so random and so sickening to me. But we should definitely have uh, uh, Leomi Maldonado on the podcast if she'll accept. I would and, love. I love Naomi. Oh, I love Naomi. Let me go come in here and read us down. She's like, listen, Maybe. listen, you two ball black bitch, don't you ever come for me. She goes like, how, you want to see ballroom? A- this is ballroom. That is not even Close how Naomi laptop. talks. That's not even how Naomi <laughs> talks. She doesn't even talk like that. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing, you're doing, you you're doing an impersonation of um, what's the name on Law Legendary? Roach. No, not Law Roach. 
uh, the one from Pose on Legend. Well, she was on Legendary. Uh, um, um, Dominique Jackson. Yeah, when she goes, I am ballroom. I was like, oh my <laughs> god, this is wild. <laughs> is it? You, you know, I'm not. I'm not gonna let you talk about um your parent company, but. What? Uh, but HBO taking away Legendary off of the thing. We we are Legendary is gone. We don't have DVDs. We will Legendary Yo, is gone. I heard that it's gone. gone off the platform. But maybe that means they're trying to shop it to somewhere else and they'll re-upload it there. Maybe I don't know. No, the because shake up going down with the whole. Oh really? Because Discovery. I, I don't know for sure because I don't work. I don't. I'm, I'm, I was only on one episode of Legendary, but most TV shows are produced by a production company, and then it is sold to the platform. So there's probably a production company that owns Legendary. It's kind like of World, like World of Wonder does Drag Race, and then Drag Race is sold to or licensed to Paramount. So there's mm-hmm. probably a company that does Legendary. Scout is the company that does Legendary? Yeah, Scout, yeah. So Scout, may- maybe Scout is looking for a new home for Legendary. I would love that. I, w- I hope so too because I mean the rule, but the word on the street is, and I've watched read some deadline articles and shit about it in Variety, that you know with the whole mer- mix up over at at Discovery, HBO, yada yada yada, is that they don't want to, because times is hard. They don't want to pay all these all these residuals to all of these shows. That's why they're taking off so many movies and so many TV shows off the platform. So because if people aren't streaming, then residuals don't have to be paid. Well, I, that's not how reality TV works. Like, have you ever gotten a residual from Paul's Drag Race? You've been on three seasons. You ever got a residual check from Paul's Drag Race? I, I get it no. from music. Yeah, from music. That's not from Drag from Race. Mu- that's not yeah. from Drag Race. That's yeah. from the sales of the music. Um, there well, are no. I'm talking about the mu- the, the, the the TV. The sorry, the like the scripted shows and the movies that they're taking off. But I don't know about is, legendary. But I don't, yeah, but... I don't know how that affects legendary. Yeah, yeah. Um, because yeah. there's no girl. If there was residuals for fucking reality TV shows, you'd be fucking rolling it, rolling it in, honey. And uh, why aren't they? A Juju Miss- B, girl, Juju B would be uh, sitting on a stack of money, honey. It should be the Oprah of drag, honey. Just have now, I'm coins. Sure that the, I'm sure that the the producers of the show they probably get uh, residual checks and, and money. Like I'm sure I'm sure mm-hmm. RuPaul gets money every time they play Drag Race. But us contestants, girl, we got paid our little five hundred dollars per episode. <laughs> Bitch, every time every time you scroll on Netflix and you let that little thing play for for, for thirty seconds, RuPaul's g- g- cha ching. RuPaul, RuPaul, RuPaul buys a Tesla every time you uh, let the screen <laughs> say, "It made the best drag queen." Win. <laughs> so, damn. Hi, Mama Ru. Give it, Mama Ru. Let me get twenty dollars. I'll text. I'll text them. It's too late. Is it too late? Nine, ten. It's eleven o'clock at night. It's not too late to text someone, is it? I'll be like, girl, do you want to come on our pod to talk about voguing on ball? Uh, it's on, on eleven drag o'clock race? in. It, it's in not too late. Like, she, she'll probably be like, yeah. no. <laughs> 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 she'll probably be like, no, I do not. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's also tons of people from the ballroom scene who probably want to. I mean, it's, it's not as, as as if we do not like have the numbers of all the the. Well, not Juicy every Couture. member, not every member of Juicy Couture. Obviously, there's the four who went on tour with us are not are not every member of ballroom. Yeah, but we know we we, we know a few a few people's up in ballroom. Yeah, we should have someone on it to like give their their thoughts. Thoughts, Siana. Bust down, thoughts, Um, hold on, I'm texting her right now. Oh my god! Let me gonna come over here and drag us, honey. Maybe she'll like. Maybe she'll be like, you know what? Maybe you guys mix. It. I don't know. I'm kidding. Naomi's very sweet. I love Naomi. Um, I just texted. She's probably gonna be like, "Hell to the no." Um. Anyway. No. No. Um, no, no, no. 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 But yeah, I I think uh, I feel like. Maybe the gatekeeping conversation. We should we should have some some more voices up in here. I think so too. We should have some more voices about different. Because about- I think you and I have a very similar take on it, and maybe we need someone who's like, "I'm gatekeeping down." Hmm. Like, who do we have any friends that are gate? Who who are my, who are our friends that gatekeepy? Um. Mateo. Mateo, what about like food and stuff? Remember when Nick said he wanted to get into comedy? Oh yeah, Mateo. Well, Mateo, is, Mateo is very protective about the way people. Mateo is a, is a hardcore, like straight up New York City back of the room, like uh, you know, uh, five bringers a night, like like uh, room to room comedian. Mateo is like, Mateo is like the archetype of what a 
when you think of a New, New York City, City comedian, comedian and how they come up, Mateo did all the stuff it takes to be like a uh, hardcore. And, and I had a very alternative route to stand up comedy. I started in the comedy clubs and then I started doing almost all of my stand up at the gay bars in drag. And then I went back to comedy clubs after being on TV. So you and Mateo will fight? Well, we probably have different opinions. I don't know that we would. I don't know that we would fight, darling. Who do you think would win in a fist fight between you and Mateo? Me. <laughs> oh my God. I'm just considerably larger than Mateo. Mateo's like five eight, and I'm I'm probably fifty pounds heavier than Mateo. Mateo's strong. I'm stronger than Mateo. But what if y'all like box like? If, if if anyone ever said, do you want to? you and Mateo? If anyone ever said, do you want to have a fight? I would never choose boxing. I'd be like, it's got to be UFC style, like mo- like UFC style fighting. I want to be able to slam you, punch you, kick you, all of it. Because that's where I would thrive. <laughs> me and Mateo, me and Mateo, I would destroy Mateo, bitch. Yeah, I, also, I don't think Mateo even Mateo. knows how to throw a punch. <laughs> oh my god! Now, if we had a well, pasta cook off, Mateo would pummel me. <laughs> or a sing off uh, or a draw off, Mateo would win. You know what I mean? Mateo's such a good artist. Mateo's so talented. What a little multi hyphenate he is. If there's one drag risker, you'd be like, this queen could actually give me a run for my money in fighting. Who would it be? In fighting? Like fist fighting. I'm trying to think. Fist fighting. Give me a run for my money. I'm hard you think, pressed to you, think, think you could whoop every drag race to whoop. You mean you you think you would just clean the floor? No, no, no one even stands a chance with you of every drag race girl. You are the fucking heavyweight <laughs> champion. You. You. Yeah. I'm a very good fighter. And no no one's even gonna fucking give you a run for your money. No one. No, I said what I said. Man, you're hilarious. You're who, who do you think? Who, who do you think? Who do you think could take me? First of all, me. Let's start. Let's start with me. <laughs> Bob, I will. Molly. Money. What physical advantage do you have over me? Bitch, I'm agility. Oh, and what am I? Uh, stumbling, Susie. <laughs> no one said. What, what do I have? Vertigo. <laughs> you asked what? I said agility. But I'm at, like, like what, what? Like what? What about me? Is not like it's not agile. Like am I? Am I clumsy? <laughs> am, am I slow? <laughs> You're not slow, but I'm faster on my feet than you. Okay, what are we racing? What are you? What are you? What are you, what are you trying to chase me? Now See, I'm running from you. That's your. That's your number one. You already think that you don't have to be. You have to. Oh my god, my Siri. First See, of all, also, what makes you? What have you ever proven that you're faster on your feet than me? What have you ever done? We literally that had proves, a race and I beat and you, you. You did not. You mean you dropped your phone and I got ahead of you? And you go, if I didn't drop my phone, the only time we've ever raced is that time you dropped your phone and you didn't and you called off the race because you dropped. Okay, your well, phone. let's do another race. Let's do another race then. Yeah, let's race, honey. <laughs> Bob does this thing where Bob would just say, he says honey at the end of something. Candy, I will fuck your, I will molly walk candy. Candy was just from the Bronx. She can't do nothing. Okay, here's, okay. okay. We need to do, you and I, I was thinking about this earlier because I was talking about I was the podcast about stuff we love. I really, I really want to do a one night only drag queen wrestling night. Me versus you, Mick versus Violet, um, Trixie versus Katya. Uh, Katia is destroying Trixie. Trixie, can, first of all, Trixie's bow legged. First of all, let's start there. Okay, Tr- no, she's pigeon toed. Pigeon toed, bow. Same. Oh okay, yeah, right. She's pigeon toed. Yeah, Trixie's pigeon toed as hell. Katia, like Katia, like does headstands, and Katia is like really fit and in shape. Well, also, I, I don't want to do it like WWF style, where we like choreograph it and plan it out and make it entertaining. I don't want to because like uh, actual wrestling won't be as entertaining as like us like doing a thing where we like jump off the ropes. And we like slam each other. Like I would love to do that. We have to get girl, that, bitch. We, we have to be like the Vivian in training for like six weeks. Yeah, we but we charge a lot of money, so it'd, it'd all be worth it. I think people would show up to see us wrestle. We, I think, I think we could do it at Madison Square Garden. Honestly, I don't think you're wrong. I think people would show up and show out if we had a full on wrestling match. But but we had to do like shit talking videos beforehand. All yeah, of. like we, we need to do like the weigh in things and we have to do like, no, that's like boxing Monet. Oh my god, you li- never watch. Okay, first wrestling. of all, UFC fighters do that too. That's that's not wrestling. That's not okay, wrestling. This, this is our own show, Bob. We can make whatever we want for the press for the promo of it. I don't want to do that. I want to do professional wrestling. 
This is my idea. You're not going to appropriate my idea. I'm gatekeeping. I'm gatekeeping. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, I don't think Leomi's coming on. She said it's a chop. No, my Yomi, Yomi texted me and said she'd love to. Oh. She said, LOL, yes, I wouldn't mind. Like, right? Did you tell her right now? Yeah, I just texted her. She texted me back already. Five minutes ago, she said that. I was saying, but did you tell her, like, right now? Or she mean, because like, she probably wants to get, like, a face on and everything? I didn't say right now. Okay. All right, work. So we can, maybe we can, like, a, no, we, should, we shouldn't do Patreon schools. We should, we should do it, like. Gatekeep it. it. Put it behind a paywall. Gatekeep it, Monet. Gatekeep the content. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Monet. So we'll, we, next thing you know, uh, we'll, soon we'll have an episode with Leami Maldonado, hopefully, if our schedules permit it, where we will it be will. able to talk about um, all of this, honey. Yes. Sounds good. Um, I love you. I love you too, Don't, Bob. I really do. Y'all, what, what, what was that? Why do you always do something? got to do something weird, like, as we're signing off? Like, it can never just be a good vibe. It's got to be, like, drinking from a, a cap of water or brushing your teeth with a hairbrush. Or, I was not brushing my teeth. I just literally just did this. Why is it, it going to be something weird with you? Why can't it ever just be goodbye and, like, be, like, a regular thing? Do you know what? <laughs> do I know what what, huh? What, Monet? Do I know what what? I yeah. love you so much, Bob. Yeah, take deep breaths. Take deep breaths, bitch. <laughs> take them real deep. Really breathe in. Really breathe in, honey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Jacob, Jacob, log off this damn Jacob, computer. Jacob, don't log off. Let, let Monet feel this heat, honey. Heat, <laughs> what honey. heat? Yeah, honey. It's a heat wave coming through. It's like a heat I wave. Heat wave. <laughs> Run it through my, it in my heart. I love that song. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you love me so much you love when i give you fever you love it you love it boy please all right bye y'all <laughs>